It's day 33. We're going to be looking at dynamic lists. So dynamic lists are actually really, really exciting. They're just ways of starting off with a blank list, adding and removing items to it as we go. And we're going to start by planning out our day. So I'm going to make my agenda. So once again, I'm going to start my variable name and put in my equals to change the value of it and my square bracket. But I'm not actually going to put anything in these square brackets. What the computer is going to do then behind the scenes is it's just going to go, oh, I'll build a list then with nothing in it. OK, weirdo. Um, hopefully the computer won't call you a weirdo. Just, just me. But the computer does set aside some space in memory and turn it into a list, which means that it has a number of things that we can do to it. For instance, we can add an item to the list. Now, of course, one of the sensible things to do here, because we want to repeatedly ask our user to add or remove something from the list, is to use a while true loop, because we don't know how often this is going to work. So let's do that. So, so far, all I'm doing is asking my user to type in an item. And I'm storing that in a variable just called item. Now, the exciting bit is how do we add that to the list? Well, we first of all give the list name. My list is called my agenda. Then we put a dot in. This dot allows us to access the functions that are connected to the list type. One of these is append. Now, append will allow us to add what's ever in the round brackets to the list. I'm going to add the item in. And let's see how this works. So it says what's next. Well, I'm going to be doing some recording today. And it asks me again. It has put it in the list, but we can't see that at the moment. What we need to do then is make sure that we are printing out the list each time so we can see what's changed. What I'm going to do is actually write a subroutine to print this out because why not? That allows me to put in And what I'm going to do as well is just print out a blank line at the end and maybe also print out a blank line before to separate that out. Now, when I want to print out my agenda, I can just call that subroutine print list and it should work a little bit nicer. Let's see what's happening there. So first thing on my agenda today is recording. Brilliant. What's next? Well, editing this video. Fantastic. You can see that the list is growing now. What else? Having a little nap. Maybe a longer nap. Maybe a really long nap. <laughs> and as we go, we can keep adding things to that list. Now, of course, we can make this a little bit nicer because, again, we've got this constantly scrolling output. If we add those two imported libraries, OS and Sleep, so that we can pause it for a second and then clear the screen each time, this is going to look much nicer. So this is the way that we use a dynamic list. But there are some important things to remember. The first one is that the list that's blank needs to be declared toward the top of the program before you're using it. It even needs to be before the subroutines, because if the subroutines are accessing that list, then it needs to exist in the first place. I'm using subroutines here just to keep some of the more complicated code separate. So we're not seeing loads of nesting, which gets a little bit confusing. How might we remove things from the list? Then? Well, that again is very simple, but it does involve changing the program further. Now I need a slightly more advanced program. So I've just made a few changes to the program. Now I've got two different things I want to do. I need to specifically ask the user whether we want them to add or remove. And to do that, I've created a new variable called menu and I've asked the question with input, do you want to add or remove? I've then got an if statement to take the add case, and I've taken the code from before and just popped it into that if statement. And I'm going to go and add my elif. Now, an elif rather than an else, because I want to make sure I do catch remove. Now, this becomes very, very easy because I can use the variable item again to ask them 
what do you want to remove? And then using the name of the list and the function, we can remove what's in those round brackets from the list, in this case, the item. Notice my print list is unindented from the if and the elif, so it always happens. No matter which of the two cases happens in the menu, it always runs. So I'm gonna start by adding, and I'm gonna add my recording. I'm gonna add again, and I'm gonna add my nap. Now it occurs to me that my bosses probably don't want to see that I'm having a nap during the work day. So let's get rid of that. It asks me what I want to remove. I'm going to remove my nap and it's gone. Boom. Very, very quickly there, we've built quite a comprehensive program that has a menu that has the ability to add and remove from a list. That is a cracker. Go and have a go yourself and see if you can get this working. Common problems. Once again, the problems we have when we're dealing with arrays are about accesses to things that exist or don't exist. In the last video, we saw a bunch of crashes when we tried to access things that were bigger than the index of the list. In our case today, I want to show you what happens if we try to remove something that isn't there. So just to start, I'm going to add to the list my recording and I'm going to attempt to remove something that isn't in that list. That list only has recording in it. So let's try and remove my nap again. That's a bit of a bad crash. That's a terrible crash. And the error message is not much help. It just says, well, X is not in the list. Well, uh, thanks a lot. What does X even mean? Could you not be more specific? What it means in normal plain old English is that the thing that you've asked to remove is not there. There is a quick workaround for this. It's to add one more if to the code. Before you remove anything, try this. If item in list. And then only remove it if it's there. You can put an else onto that if you want to, just to print out. I'm gonna use an F string here. So let's see how that works this time. Let's add a bit of dancing and then try to remove my sleeping. Now that is better. Sleeping was not in the list and it hasn't crashed. You have to be careful with this that you don't try and remove something that doesn't exist. Here's another common error and this is one of those ones that leaves me scratching my big old bald head because I never understand why people keep making this mistake. But People do, so it's worth pointing out. Let's run it and see what happens. Well, it hasn't crashed straight away. Let's run add an item to it. I'm gonna add a day of sleeping. Ow! And this error is absolutely horrible to debug because it's saying string object has no attribute append. Well, what does that even mean? We know append works because we've seen it working. It's just adding to it. Why, computer, why are you being a big old meanie to me? Well, if we take a look at the code, the problem is with the append function. We've got two objects the wrong way around. The way we append to the list is we always need the list name first, and then what's being added to the list in the round brackets. You will be shocked how many times you do it the wrong way around. I think it's because once you've asked for an item, once you've asked for a variable, that's stuck in your brain. And so that's the thing you wanna get onto the screen next. It always has to be the name of the list dot append. So you might be able to see the same problem occurring later on down in remove. And if we do this, sleep works, this should work and it crashes with a similar error message. If you see this error message, attribute error, it's basically saying they're the wrong way around. I can't add something to a string 
because it's just text. It's not a list. So once again, we need to swap those two things around. It always has to be list name dot action, and then in brackets, the thing that wants to be added or removed. And now it works. There's some broken code for you as ever. Go and have a look to see if you can fix it. It might be a little bit faffy because it is quite complicated now, these programs. You'll need an eagle eye to see all the things that are wrong with my code. Your challenge for today is something really quite useful. You're going to build a to-do list manager. You're gonna be asking the user whether they want to view, add, or edit the to-do list. If they view the to-do list, you should print it out in a nice way. Again, top marks for a subroutine. If they want to add an item to the to-do list, you should allow them to type in what that item is and add it to the bottom. If you want to edit the to-do list, you should ask them which item they've completed and then remove it from the list. For now, allow duplicates. Don't worry too much about that. And also allow items to be removed one at a time if there is a duplicate item. That's the default behavior, but we'll just let that ride for now. This is actually a really useful program to manage your to-dos. In a list, the first item you put in is the first item that gets removed. This will allow you to create a list of to-dos and remove them as they're done. It'd also be really great if you use some of your knowledge of F-strings and color printing to make sure that we have a title and that maybe the items in the list look a little bit different or even have some numbers associated with them. Do some cool stuff with it so you can show off. When you're done, don't forget to share it with us in the community by publishing it and using the hashtag replit 100 days of code when you're sharing it on social media. Tomorrow is day 34. We're over a third of the way through the entire course. And we're gonna look at how to use loops and iteration to manage lists.